How much does a Bechar, a firstborn, inherit? So as we know, there's an explicit verse in the Torah in Parshish Kiseitse regarding the Ben HaHauva ve'aben HaSnua. If a man is married to two women, one who is despised, the second is loved. The eldest child of Bechar receives a double portion in the inheritance, even if he is the firstborn of the hated wife. And from here derives the well-known halacha that a firstborn must inherit a double portion. So in this lesson we will discuss a number of details regarding this law. First off, regarding the reason why does a Bechor receive a double portion, so the Arizal explains that a firstborn son, as opposed to a firstborn daughter, or any other child next in line, receives a double portion of the spirit of the soul of his father. So the firstborn male son carries within him a double portion in quality or quantity of the father's soul. And hence we find also in different halachis, such as kibbut of aim, that there is also such a law that one must honor his eldest brother. Meaning, if he has a brother that's a firstborn, then he must honor the firstborn brother, who is the firstborn child. Once again, because he contains the double spirit of his father, and it's as if he has the presence of his father within him, hence also the explanation of why he receives a double portion. This ruling in the Torah that a Bechar receives a double portion is recorded in the Gemara of Avasar 122b, Rambam Hilchas Nechalis 2.1, and the Mechabrin Chayshin Mishpa chapter 277, Halacha 1. And in these chapters, a number of details are explained which limit the inheritance or define the inheritance of the Bechar. First of all, Onan applies to a Bechar who is halachically defined as a Bechar. In 277, the Mechaber goes on to explain various instances in which what we may call a firstborn son will actually not be a firstborn son regarding the laws of inheritance. So the first thing to find out when dealing with the question, does my firstborn son receive a double inheritance, is to find out is he halachically deemed as a Bechar. Which is explained in chapter 277 is beyond the scope of this year to go into all those details. Even if one has determined that the firstborn son is indeed a firstborn according to Allah to receive a double inheritance, in Allah, in Allah it's explained that he does not inherit all assets from his father as a double portion. Meaning the double portion that he receives more than other brothers is only in certain assets, while in others he doesn't receive any double portion, but rather a single portion like anyone else. This is explained in length in the Shulchan Aruch Mechaber chapter 278. And an, a very practical example of this, which is the ramification of a lot of money, is a bank account. A son does not inherit monies that are owed to the father as a double portion. Rather, he receives as a single portion like everyone else. Being that a bank account means that the father has credit in the bank for a certain sum of money which the bank owes him, therefore that money... The, fa the son, the firstborn son, does not receive a double portion from. So even if someone's a multi-multi-millionaire, if the bulk of that money is found in banks and not in real estate, then the firstborn son will not be able to take a double portion from that main bulk of the money, but only from tangible assets that have remained from the father. Now how is the double portion calculated? So the Mechab and Shulchan Aruch, as we said in chapter 277, explains that he receives as if he is two sons. So, for example, the father had three sons and one who's a Bechar. So you split all the assets into four, and the oldest son takes two of those portions. If he left five sons, you split the assets into six, and the firstborn son receives two of those portions, which is 33%. If he left nine sons, you split it into ten. The firstborn son takes two portions, which is 20% of the assets. Well, everyone else receives 10%. And so on and so forth, this is how it is distributed in all cases. Who does the firstborn son inherit a double portion from? So as is explained in the Shulchan Aruch 278.1, he only inherits a double portion from the assets, the Yerusha of his father, not from the assets of his mother. The firstborn son has a mother who's very wealthy, of her own wealth, and she passes away. He will not receive a double portion from her inheritance. Rather, he receives an equal portion like everyone else. In Mir Tashem, what we will discuss in a further halacha is, is there any legal way to circumvent the need to give a double portion to the firstborn? Can you write a will which will designate an equal portion to all sons, including the firstborn? Meaning, can you uproot 
the Torah's command to give the firstborn a double portion. Sometimes people want to do this in order not to cause any jealousy. Everyone should get the same. Or for other reasons. And the question is, is it halachically valid to do so? And if so, then how? Mitzvah this will be discussed in the future halacha. What we will conclude with is that just like the Torah commands one to give his eldest son, who was the firstborn, a double portion, so to Bnei Yisrael are considered Bnei B'chayr Yisrael, the firstborn sons of Hashem, and we also have received a double spiritual portion from God in contrast to the other nations of the world, hence giving us our godly soul, as explained in chapter 2 in Tanya. Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work for making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.